Praise the Lord. God bless you today. This is Evangelist Brenda Thompson. Today I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. My message to you today is torn between two lovers. I said my message today is torn between two lovers. My, my lesson today is taken from 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 17 to verse 40. This message really has uh, nothing to do with uh, sensuality. It has all to do with the backsliding of Israel. Hallelujah. Look with me at 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 17 to 40. And it came to pass, when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. Now therefore, Send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel and the prophets of Baal, 450, and the prophets of the grove, 400, which eat at Jezebel table. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks and let them choose one bullock for themselves and cut it in pieces and lay it on wood and put no fire under. And I will dress the other bullock and lay it on wood and put no fire under. And call ye on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God that answered by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, It is well spoken. And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullock for yourself, and dress it first. For ye are many, and call on the name of your gods, but put no fire under. And they took the bullock which was given them, and they dressed it, and called on the name of Baal from morning even until noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice nor any that answered, and they leaped upon the altar which was made. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is a God. Either he is talking, or he is pursuing, or he is in a journey, or per adventure he sleepeth and must be awake. And they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lances till the blood gushed out upon them. And it came to pass when midday was fast, and they prophesied unto, until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that there was neither voice nor any to answer, nor any that regarded. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. 
and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken. And Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribe of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed. And he put the wood in order and cut the bullock in pieces and laid him on the wood. And said, fill your four barrels with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. And he said, do it the second time. And they did it the second time. And he said, do it the third time. And they did it the third time. And the water ran round about the altar. And he filled the trench also with water. And it came to pass at the time of the offering and evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel and that I am thy servant and that I have chosen all these, all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned your heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell, and consumed the burnt sacrifice, and the wood and the stones, and the dust, and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces, and they said, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is the God. Look with me at First Kings chapter 16, verse 28 to 32. So Amri slept with his fathers and was buried in Samaria. And Ahab his son reigned in his stead. And in the thirty and eighth year of Asa, king of Judah, began Ahab the son of Omri to reign over Israel, and Ahab the son of Omri reigned over Israel in Samaria twenty and two years. And Ahab the son of Omri did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. And it came to pass as if it had been a life thing, for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nabal, that he took to wife Jezebel, the daughter of Edbeel, king of the Zeodonian, and went and served Baal and worshipped him. And he read up an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. This message this evening is all about the effectiveness of prayer. I would like to draw your, your attention concerning this message with Israel backsliding after God delivered them in a supernatural way out of Egypt's bondage. When Israel came out of Egypt's captivity, they made their journey many places until they came to Samaria. Israel had one love. Israel had one lover who was the true and living God. But when they came into Samaria, they were seduced by idolatry and Balaam worship or Baal worship. Balaam means many God. And they became torn between two lovers. These two lovers were the church and the world. Because of the extremity of Israel's sin, the judgment of God was mightily upon Samaria, the place where Israel dwelt. God's judgment was through a famine 
or recession in the land of Samaria. King Ahab held a prophet in Israel, Elijah, accountable, and he was in hot pursuit of Elijah, but God was with Elijah. The name Elijah means that God is with us. At that time, there were 850 false prophets who were hired by King Ahab and Queen Jezebel for political purposes. These false prophets were assigned to the principalities and powers who governed Israel's government in Samaria, controlled by King Ahab and Queen Jezebel. For the first time in over three years, King Ahab saw the prophet Elijah. There was a confrontation between the king and the prophet. However, Elijah brought the situation to a conclusion with an offer that King Ahab could not refuse. In verse, 40, in verse 19 to 21, represented strength. But in verse 22, Elijah showed himself weak because of his fear for King Ahab. Perfect love casteth out all fear. Verse 23 shows Elijah's strength and his readiness for a showdown. But I will also like to remind you of the greatest showdown on earth. When Jesus Christ went to Calvary and defeated hell and death on the cross and took the keys from the devil, the keys of hell and death, he arose triumphant from the grave and is alive forevermore. Verse 23 to 25 speaks about the blood. The Bible said without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Thank God that Jesus shed his blood for us at Calvary. There were two lovers in Israel at a time and Israel became torn between two lovers. They were the true and living God and the God Baal, the God of Samaria. There were many gods in Israel at that time. They all belonged to Baal, Baal God and many more. However, the God of Israel at that particular time was Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shammah, Jehovah Nessi, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Sabbath, and El Elyon, and many other names. But today we call him Jesus, because the Bible said, Therefore has God highly exalted Jesus, and given him a name that is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven, and things under the earth. The Bible said that Elijah prayed a prayer, a prayer of intercession that brought Israel to a place of repentance and the judgment of the false prophet regained power and strength and authority to Samaria. And rain fell and Israel had been restored to righteousness. God bless you in Jesus' name.